Do any of you know what etagami is? Etagamis are drawings with a message, and anyone can make them. They are handcrafted cards like these, with wonderful heartfelt messages drawn on them. These three ladies are going to draw some etagami for us. Are we ready, everyone? With etagami, it doesn't matter if you're not good at drawing. Just draw what you see and it'll work out fine. It only takes three steps. One, draw the lines with ink. Two, add color. Three, put your message in and you're done. Now let's have some fun. First, let me show you the tools you'll be using. We have brushes, ink stick, ink stone, card, practice paper, and gansai paints for adding color. You also have a brush washer, palette, dropper, and a pad at your disposal. I'm sure most of you are not too familiar with these. Is there anyone who's used a brush like this one before? Not me, no. How about you? I used those flat brushes for watercoloring when I was a kid, but never these rounder and sharper ones. How are these four types different from each other? Well, with these brushes, you draw the outline or add words and color. That's why there are four types, depending on what you want to do. Brushes are held together with glue when they're brand new. So before you start, push the tip of the brush in the brush washer with some water. The glue has to dissolve, so you can loosen the root of the brush with your fingers. And this is the ink stick. This is probably the first time you've seen this too. You use this to make black ink in order to draw the shapes and words. Let's use the ink stick and ink stone to make some black ink. First, Put some water here with the dropper. Then place the ink stick gently in the water and slowly rub it against the stone. You'll see black liquid start to form. This will be the ink you use to dry your etagami. Let's all give it a try. Wow, this smells weird. Does it? Yeah. It got black really quick. Neat. <laughs> oh, I got my hand all black. <laughs> You're so clumsy. <laughs> Look at that, I know. All right, I think that's good enough. Now the ink is ready. Next, I'll show you the Gansai paints used for coloring. Gansai paints are water soluble and blend very well with the black ink we just created. We can create very unique Japanese colors by combining them. Today, we have a set of 18 colors. There sure are a lot of them. I like how they go from light to more vibrant colors. <laughs> this is getting exciting. <laughs> Okay, let's practice a little with the Gansai paint and ink. The first lesson is all about lines. When drawing lines, we we'll generally use the ink brush. For this, you hold the top of the brush and lower it to the paper vertically, then move slowly. Your posture is great when you draw. 
Well, thanks. These lines should not be clean, but drawn with emotion. Now, let's use this tracing sheet to draw some lines. Vertical, horizontal, and spiral lines. We'll practice drawing all of those lines in different directions. Whoa, my lines are all shaky. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> this is fun. It's like you're stretching the line out forever. <laughs> Even with just these basic vertical, horizontal, and spiral lines, there are so many ways to express yourself. Okay, let's try drawing these turnips. Turnips have round roots, long stems, and large leaves. They've got lots of shapes to them, so they're great for practice. To start out, we'll let the tip of the brush absorb a lot of ink. And wipe off the excess with a cloth. Check the level of darkness on your practice paper. Then, adjust the brush tip with the edge of the inkstone. So here we go. Watch me carefully here. First, draw the round part of the turnip. Combine the right and left circular strokes. Next, you'll want to slowly move the brush from bottom to top and bring out the strength in the stem. Pull the brush vertically and keep a steady rhythm. Make sure to keep adjusting the brush tip so there are no stray fibers. This will allow you to draw nice, elegant lines. All right, let's try drawing it on the tracing sheet. Oh, this isn't going so great for me. I mean, but it's kind of fun drawing lines with the brush like this. I think I'm pretty good at this. You're all doing great. Your lines bring out your own character. What's it saying about me? <laughs> <laughs> that you're a very serious person. <laughs> oh, it's so true, too. Oh, that is very true. Now, we'll work on coloring. Once we have the outlines, we can finish up the picture with our colors. For Etagami, you don't want to paint everything between the lines like a coloring book. The picture will lose its unique flavor. Here are a few pointers to make your etagami look elegant and unique. First point. For etagami, you start by painting light colors. Then you build up the intensity with thicker and darker colors. For this turnip, let's start with the lightest color on the leaves. With a very red gradient brush, Mix some yellow-green with a bit of white pigment and add it into the leaves. Be sure to leave some blank space in this process. Second point. Leaving this blank space is important. Having the blank space makes the color stand out more when you add another one. It creates more of an artistic effect if you deliberately leave white space and rougher areas like that. Next, with the gradient brush, mix the yellow green with dark green and add it to the leaves. Spread the color throughout the leaves. Another important thing, rather than painting, you should think of it as placing the brush. Instead of filling in the shapes, just get a rhythm going and try padding the paper with the brush. Take some of the water off of your brush and add the same color as before. Now we're intensifying the color on the leaves. 
When adding darker colors, it's important to adjust the amount of water in your brush. Mix yellow green with a bit of dark green and deep blue, and add it to the white space in between the leaves. Another way to make darker colors is to combine Gansai paints and build up the colors. With a very wet gradient brush, mix a little bit of the yellow green and with the yellow and add it to the bottom of the turnip. Finally, with a very wet gradient brush, add deep blue on the turnip to create shadows. Now your picture is finished. Let's all give it a try. Try to keep my coloring hints in mind as you do it. The more colors I add, the more of a 3D feel I'm getting. Mm, the Gansai colors add a really delicate feel to the picture. This is kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah, I really like it. I'm pretty good. Yeah, I'm progressively getting better. <laughs> right? <laughs> Now, I'll show you the basics of etagami composition. When drawing something oblong like a turnip or a glass, it's best to hold the card vertically. That way, the drawing will have more intensity. Being as creative as possible regarding where you add your message by leaving blank spaces in the top or bottom of the card, like on the sample, will make for a more interesting creation. Meanwhile, it's best for beginners to hold a card horizontally because you can capture the subject easily and use your brushes more freely. It's also easier to leave blank spaces for words written horizontally, like in English. So here we have drawings of two tulips. Sydney, what would you write here? Um, like, spring is here? How about you, Cynthia? Well, maybe the flowers are blooming again? Mm. And you, Francois? Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Great! All of those are really nice. There really aren't any rules for writing messages. Write whatever you're feeling from the drawing. The important thing is to express yourself. Okay, now we've gone over the basics. It's time to pick a subject and start drawing. Yay! <laughs> we've put a few potential subjects for you in the other room. Head on over and pick one to draw with. You have 20 minutes. <laughs> Starting now. Okay, great! <laughs> Maybe difficult though? My yeah, that, it. that would be really hard. Oh, that's too <laughs> simple. Okay, that'll work. I chose these because I like donuts a lot. I'll try to draw them as tempting as they look. I think this mug is pretty cute, so I thought I'd try that out. I went for the bananas because what's his morning more than that? Their shape could be a bit tricky, but I'll give it a shot. I'm not sure how I can make this look attractive. You can do it. Just enjoy. Well, getting this line right is really challenging. Some coffee. You can see that in there. It's what coming together. It's called coming together. What an imagination. <laughs> My chocolate coat is very difficult. OK, that looks good. That's pretty that good. good. I didn't know there's just circles. Is that OK? It looks good. Yeah, it looks 3D. I think it's beautiful, actually. That's perfect. You think so? Yeah. All finished. I'm ready. All set. All right, everyone. Let's take out your pieces. I drew some donuts. It was hard to give them the dimension and the round softness that they've got. But I think I did pretty, pretty well. My message is my sweet buddy. Just look at him that makes me want to eat them up. <laughs> the softness is conveyed rather well, but the chocolate could be a bit darker. 
It also looks like you put some real thoughts into the size of your donuts. <laughs> I picked bananas. I tried to express the taste and freshness of them. In the beginning, I did some layout work on this piece of paper, but then I thought I should just get on with it. And I wound up finishing it in no time. It was a lot of fun. Wow! Your feelings are well conveyed in your line work. The bananas really stand out, but the color could use a bit more depth. Maybe try layering the colors next time for a different effect. I drew a mug. It was tough choosing the Gansai paints since I wasn't really sure which colors I should go with. It makes a big difference if you take one color and apply it in different shades or mix several Gansai paints at once. Yes, it definitely does. The vibrant color of your mug really stands out, but the outline could use some more care. Mm -hmm. The top of the mug here looks like a rectangle, but it should be closer to an ellipse. You may lean toward drawing more quickly because the shape is familiar, so be careful. You've all made some really beautiful pieces. That's what etagami is all about using the brush freely and expressing yourself on paper. I really like all the fun and excitement that comes from these drawings. The messages help make the person you sent these to feel good too. I hope today's lesson will inspire you to make other etagami and express yourself even more. Etagami really has a lot of uses. It delivers so much more than a simple card ever could. They're also good for decorating your room and adding color to your everyday life. You can even take a photo of them and share them on social media. I hope you're all ready to create your very own world of etagami, everyone! Have fun!